All right, y'all, what's going on, man? So I was at this game. Georgia Tech pulls out a big win. It gave Duke their first loss of the season. That's now 5-1. and one. Georgia Tech goes to 4-2. and two. Big win for them at home against the Yellow Jackets. A game that they were actually favored in. Nine and a half favorite to come out on top in this one. Let's talk about everything I see and what's my biggest takeaways. We'll also have an article on SI about this as well. All right, so first and foremost, man, I do want to give credit here to Jamal Haynes, who is the birthday boy. 128 yards rushing, 6.7 yards to carry. Was dealing with a lot of injuries, y'all. I did not know this. I found this out today. A lot of nagging injuries. So it was never fully 100%. So that kind of explains kind of the struggles they had, right? Maybe against Syracuse, going back to Louisville. Because he didn't look, he didn't quite look right. And the offensive line didn't look like they were as dominant and physical as they usually are either. We didn't see that tonight. We seen a really good, stout offensive line led by Weston Franklin. Um, you know, we seen really guys getting into it, creating major holes for Jamal Haynes. Also, Chad Alexander, who had 10 carries for 60 yards as well. They did an outstanding job. They rushed for over 245 yards. I'm going to say that again. They rushed for 245 yards. Now, again, if you know Georgia Tech and you follow the program as closely as I do, this is a team that wants to run the football. They want to embody uh, the character of their head coach, right? They want to get physical. Right? They want to win at the line of scrimmage. That's what this team wants to do. In them other games, they weren't doing that. They did that tonight. They did that. You know what I'm saying? And um, I also thought Haynes King had a pretty good game. When you look at what he was able to do and uh, he told what the defense give him. Now, I know they had a lot of screen plays set up. I understand I was part of the offense. I didn't love it at times because I felt like the defense was getting a good read on it. Uh, but I thought he did a good job taking care of the football not forcing any throws. And I told you, I think he's the second best quarterback in the in the ACC. You know, when you go and look at Cam Ward, who I, who I just did a video on, I give him the nod. Besides Cam Ward, there's not a quarterback in the ACC I would take over Haynes King. That's just me. Another great game from him. I would say the only thing with Tech, I want to see him incorporate more double moves. I like the screenplay, pumping it at, allowing obviously uh, guys to go deep. But incorporate more double moves. These guys can win. When you look at Malik Rutherford, you look at Eric Singleton Jr., they're hard to guard. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's hard for a defense to key on them. And they got so many weapons, you know, in the in the passing attack. Chase Lane, their tight ends, Jackson Halls, Avery Boyd, their running backs, right? Jamal Haynes, Chad Alexander. Like they got guys all over the field. I just want to see more. They did not have a lot of explosive plays tonight. You know what I'm saying? They was able to, you know, kind of move the ball methodically. You know, some good big spring plays here and there. But more explosive plays in the passing attack is probably just one critique I have. But love Malik Rutherford. Love Eric Singleton Jr. They've been doing a great job. And the freshmen are getting a lot of time. Um, Isaiah Canyon seen the field a lot today. Bailey Stockton's getting more playing time as well. Love to see those guys being able to get on the field, man, and make an impact. Now, when you look at team stats, and I was worried there at one point, because remember, y'all, Duke took a 14-10 lead against Tech, and it was kind of struggling. They hit a little low offensively. At that point, it was outgaining uh, uh, Duke. Like, Duke was struggling. I'm going to break down their numbers as well here in a second. But you look at the difference, and really it should have been more of a beatdown than what it was. 412 total yards to just 279, right? Most of their yards came... Uh, through the air, 205 passes to just 167 for Georgia Tech when you look at it, right? And then also, like I said, ground game, 74, 245 yards on the ground. More efficient on third down, 7 for 16 compared to 3 for 11. Georgia Tech also dominated the time of possession. It's not down here, but they had like 30-something minutes, 30, I think 35, 36 minutes compared to like 20-something for Duke. Dominated the time of the possession as well. Game should have not been as close, in my humble opinion, as it was. All right, now let's look at the Duke stats, right? Now, when you break down the key stats right here, Star Thomas, 14 carries, 48 yards. Last week, he cooked UNC, right? 30 carries, 166 yards, and a touchdown. They had no answers for him. So this speaks to the Georgia Tech defense and their ability, right? And also, Coach Key in the press conference talked about Jeff Simpson and his schemes and what he's able to devise up. He had this team well prepared. They were shooting through the gaps. They was getting tackles for loss. And it was very physical all night long. Made it tough sledding. Now, when you look at Duke, they don't want to do this. 31 passes for Malik Murphy, only 20 run. They don't want to do that. They want to run the football. And you could tell how comfortable they felt with putting the ball, no disrespect to Malik Murphy, but in his hands, 
kind of in that game late. Now, they got some big plays, obviously, from Samir Haggins, one catch, 65 yards, and Eli Panko. So I'm going to give them more credit where credit is due. But those came on deep, shallow crosses over the middle of the field when Georgia Tech was sending a blitz. For the most part, they did a great job of making this game tough, making them feel uncomfortable um, as well. I'm going to shout out some players here in a second as well. But they did a great job of that against Malik Murphy, you know what I'm saying, throughout the night. So really, Georgia Tech is a lot of credit because their offense, like I said before, hit a low. They kept a minute uh, throughout, and they shut them down. Once they had scored 14-10 uh, and took the lead, shut them absolutely down, man. And their offense ended up taking over and getting a win. But, man, defensively, you can't ask for a better effort. If Georgia Tech has that that kind of defense and they're they making it tough like that, now they'll face probably more prolific offenses down the field, but you have to feel pretty good. All right, now speaking of defense, I do want to give a shout-out to Amari Harvey. First interception, I believe, this season for Georgia Tech, and he had seven tackles. Now, this guy's a cornerback, and I think that's what's been most impressive. Obviously, Kyle Eifert's a phenomenal player for the Yellow Jackets as well. He's usually leading them in tackling, but it's been multiple times this year uh, Amari Harvey has led the Tech in tackling. That says a lot. That says about how physical he is and how good he is. Got to give a credit credit is due. Trinellis Taylor was another one all over the field tonight. Five tackles, uh, three solo as well. I told y'all about Tay Seymour. I was really impressed with him tonight. Five tackles, two solos, and a uh, pass deflection in this one. Uh, a critical one, too, because it was like second and 10, right over the middle of the field. Duke had momentum. He comes over, times it perfectly, uh, dislodges the football as well. Jordan Vandenberg is another one I want to give a shout out to. He balled single-handedly, man, took over the game in the first half, right? Three tackles, three solos. He had a sack and two tackles for loss. I mean, just penetrating with ease, man. And this, what's so cool about this kid, he was not starting out um, as a starter at the beginning of the season. He just kept working, kept working, kept being productive, having high PFF grades, and look at that. Look at what you know. Now he is starting for them, earned a role, and now he's kind of a relied-upon starter. So, man, yeah, man, all these players, big games for them on the defense side of the ball. Secondary, I thought, for the most part, besides, you know, some of those busts um, and coverage on, on when they had those blitzes, I thought they played outstanding in this one while Georgia Tech tried to figure it out offensively, you know, in this game up until the fourth quarter. But if you got that kind of a defense, if you're a Yellow Jacket fan, you should feel pretty good if they can do that on a consistent basis. So Yeah, y'all, that's my full intel. That's my insight, man. Jamal Haynes looked like his usual self. Offensive line balled out. Tay Seymour, uh, Jordan Vandenberg, Amari Harvey get my game balls. They were outstanding in this contest as well. Um, Haynes King keeps doing Haynes King things and not turning the football, playing really complimentary football, playing well. Uh, for the most part, a couple of things they got to clean up. Uh, but a, uh, I thought a thorough, all-around great win uh, on both sides of the ball, special teams, offense, defense, really great contest between you know two pretty good teams, man, and I don't think it disappointed. I really don't, man. So that's my reaction. Georgia Tech advances the 4-2. and two. They're only two wins away now from a bowl game. They go on the road to UNC, so they have another pretty much elite running back test again. We'll see if they'll be ready for the test next Saturday at noon, man. But Tech fans, y'all tell me how y'all feeling after that win against the Blue Devils.